My name is Tyler Wanzak. I'm a Colorado native. I've been living and working in the Wheat Ridge community selling real estate for the past 12 years. What I want to talk to you today, and this video is for anybody who is looking to add an ADU onto their property. What is an ADU? What are the requirements that you're going to need to have? All right, so what is an ADU? An ADU is an accessory dwelling unit. Why would you want one? Well, this could be for anybody that has relatives moving in, anybody finding themselves in a hard situation. Um, there's also a very nice income potential. You know, for a standard two bedroom, something that I wanted to do, the average around Wheat Ridge is about $1,600 a month. Airbnb could be as high as $150 a night. Um, on average about $73 a night. So there's a really nice investment income approach to looking at why you would want to do an ADU. So when I first got excited seeing the news article that ADUs are going to be allowed in Wheat Ridge, I knew that this was something I wanted to do for future income. But looking at the design, I kind of pulled up a big aerial map um, what I ended up doing is going in the backyard with a tape measure, kind of seeing how far out, how far wide, um, locating where the water is going to be coming from, where the electricity is going to come, where's my sewage, sewage line that I kind of have to tap into. So those are kind of the three major aspects of looking at, hey, am I in a space where um, I can adequately have the sewer line drain all the way out to the main and tapping into that main. Knowing exactly where I wanted the ADU, I kind of knew I wanted to have its own separate entrance and it's also an actual requirement um, for an ADU to have its own entry. And so I toyed around with Sweet Home 3D. It was just a free software online. I mean, you kind of put everything pen to paper or mouse to click and just was able to toy around with it. And throughout my progression, it moved from one bedroom that had a really nice space to what is now a, a two bedroom space to really emphasize and get more income down the road. So then comes the permitting process. So permitting, you're gonna pay roughly $700 just to have them review. So before the permitting process, what I did is I got in contact with their engineering department and I sent them kind of a rough design of what I wanted as far as how many taps and as far as I was gonna have adequate water pressure. That was more of a week long process. There was no fee involved in that. It was just more of a free service that they said, yes, you have tap space for the home. So after getting approval for that, I went and submitted a site plan with an ILC. And so if you haven't done an ILC, you know, that could roughly be a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars cost just to have somebody come over and lay out the land, but it's something that you're definitely going to need, um, especially for me since I'm trying to squeeze all the way to that um, setback. Um, they're really going to want to see that you know you're not encroaching on your neighbor's property. Another thing is the fire protection plan. Um, basically, you know, since this is going to be attached to the home, that there is going to be a um, a significant uh, fire retardant. So as if this was to go up in smoke, that uh, both dwellings wouldn't burn down. Um, I also provided elevations from all four sides. Those are kind of comical drawings, but I think it's, it's still gonna work. So me being the primary resident on the home, I'm obviously GCing this process. And so one big thing that the city did want to know is who was doing the electrical work, who was doing the HVAC work, who was doing the plumbing. And so I did have to provide a contact information and license numbers for all three. Luckily for me, finding them, I've worked with these people in the past, so that was a relatively easy transition for me. I'd say if you were doing this, you know, feel free to ask me any questions. If you know anybody that has done, you know, contract work in the past, you know, kind of lean on them for, you know, who is uh, the best people to work with because that can certainly make or break, um, you know, the project. And you do want to just have the right people work with you and keeping it smooth. So one of the very first things I did 
when I found out that you know ADUs were allowed in Wheat Ridge was going down to the city and actually talking with somebody with zoning and making sure that my home was going to fit the parameters. What they wanted to see was over a 10,000 square foot lot. They wanted it to be zoned R2 and that you had adequate space you know, to, to make this work. So if you are looking into the Wheat Ridge community, there's actually 10 active homes that fit that 10,000 square foot R2 that are currently active on the market. So if you are looking into Wheat Ridge and maybe looking at this as a future income, or maybe you're thinking that, hey, I wanna move you know, mom and dad into an ADU on the property, definitely give me a call. We can help you out and look for that. So myself doing this as the homeowner, I wanted to kind of give a full disclosure. I've been in real estate since 2011. I grew up in construction. I actually have a construction management degree from CSU. Um, I've been in part of construction basically my whole life. So me looking at this going, oh, this is gonna be an easy deal. It certainly is in my mind, but for somebody else, you know, I would say it would be highly beneficial to work with an architect. It'd be highly beneficial to work with a GC. I'm more than happy to help however I can. Give me a call, I'd love to, you know, consult you know throughout the process this obviously being the first step of many um, but yeah keep watching my videos um, and uh, would love to kind of give you some more feedback on the start to finish uh, building an ADU